What is up all of you awesome and amazing people on YouTube? The old coot here coming back at you with some cut up potatoes that have been washed and rinsed and are now kind of semi drying in a colander thingamajiggy. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to be frying those up in a stainless steel pan that has been seasoned very similar to a wok, right? Like an Asian style wok. And if you want to just be brought up to speed of what's going on is... Over the last like three or four days, basically I'm turning a stainless steel frying pan. This happens to be an all clad D3. Uh, links will be down there below in the description section. 10 inch frying pan, turning this into like a wok style seasoning. Uh, so anyways, the process just bring up to speed was basically I washed and cleaned the stainless steel pan, right? Did soap and water, all that good stuff. And then brought it up to between medium and low heat, put some avocado oil in there to coat like the bottom of the pan, let that come up to temperature, like three to four minutes or so, something like that. Basically poured off the oil, dried it off with a lint-free towel or cloth, right? Very important. Don't use napkins in the beginning. Try to use a lint-free towel uh, just so that <clears throat> basically you don't get any lint or particles from like a paper towel in there that could stick and then cause more stickage. But anyways, after I did that, let's say once or twice, you could do it 30 times. You could do it however many times you want to. The next thing or the first the first real thing that you should be cooking in there should be some sort of bacon fat or beef fat. And I'm talking just the fat. So no, the fat, the fat, and just the fat. No protein at all. So if you're going to use bacon lard or pork belly, try to isolate just the fat. And then basically you want to deep fry that in the pan so that the fat from the bacon or or if you use like fat from beef or whatever can intermingle with your oil and the oil that i used to do all that was avocado oil i believe in asian countries they use peanut oil or they'll use some kind of blend of vegetable oil something similar uh, other countries will use something like rice bran oil which is totally fine basically you just want a high smoke point oil to do that frying and what that frying does is that gives you the first real coat of patina like this beautiful brown color which eventually will turn black and harden and give you that perfect non-stick seasoning in the pan so anyways we're at a point now where uh you know I've, I've already done the egg i did the egg in the video just prior to this one we did five eggs and an omelet and cheese and the cheese didn't stick either so i know i've got a good base coating to keep building on and adding on to. So now what I want to do is I want to do some deep fat frying. So the pan's cold, cold to the touch, the whole nine yards to get the idea. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn this on to between medium and low heat, right? Somewhere in that ballpark kind of, you know, biggest burner that I possibly have on my stove. Uh, and what I want to do is I just want to let the pan heat up. So between medium and low heat, right? I'm kind of more closer to maybe the medium ish side. And I've got these marked off because I've done these hundreds of times. Uh, and the oil that I'm going to be using today just for cost effectiveness and just for overall, you know, demonstration purposes is Mazzola corn oil. Uh, and like I said, you can use any one of these. You can even use grapeseed oil if you want to spend the money. Like avocado oil currently at Costco is somewhere around like $15, $16 for a liter. That's January 2024. The rice bran oil, I'm not sure how much this costs exactly, believe it or not, because I actually got this uh, as a promotion, right? Free, 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 free with Indian Gate when you buy your 10 pound oil. Well, anyways, I got this as a promotion as part of that. So whatever it costs, whatever it costs. Uh, Mazzola is pretty inexpensive, probably the most inexpensive of the three. One thing I will tell everybody is do not, do not ever, ever use olive oil in a seasoned stainless steel pan like this. Cause what's gonna happen is, is because the olive oil, whether it's regular olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, Spanish olive oil, whatever Costco sells, olive oil has a lower smoke point, which means it's gonna get sticky when you bring it up to these like medium and some, some cases maybe over medium type heat uh, and ruin the whole nonstick process. Cause then you're gonna have to strip it down and then start all over again. But anyways, uh, my pan's been heating up for about a minute or two, so you try to stick with high temp, high temp smoke point oils, right? And like I said, in my case, I'm going to be using Mazzola. So medium heat, this has been heating up for about a minute or two. What that basically does is it opens up the pores again. Uh, and, you, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour enough oil in there to basically coat the bottom of the pan with about a quarter of an inch thick layer of oil. Uh, so this is just going to go straight in. So nothing, you know... Nothing fancy about this, but basically you want to just keep going and going and going and going. Somewhere around right there is about right. So I've got, I would say, about a quarter of an inch thick layer. 
That's kind of hard to see on camera, but you just want a pool of basically corn oil. And now I'm going to let this come up to temperature. One other tip or trick is, yes, you are going to get some smokage. If you do have a, a vent fan or a hood or whatever, go ahead and turn that on. Right now I've got it off because otherwise you wouldn't be able to hear me. I have the industrial strength. <laughs> professional uh house lane great vent hood by the way i will put a link down below in the description house lane makes some awesome vent hoods that are like very powerful for home use but built like a tank for you know restaurant style or as close to restaurant commercial grade as you possibly can uh so there you go so anyways this is going to heat up in the meantime i'm going to go back over to my potatoes and uh, oh, another tip or trick is when you wash out your stainless steel pan that's been seasoned like a wok right quote unquote Always try to use the soft side of the sponge and just warm water. That's all you need. If you start using soap, right, what's going to happen is, is you're going to strip off that seasoning, especially the first like 20 times that you use the pan. So try at least for the first 20 times that you use your stainless steel pan to just basically limit yourself to like deep frying and, you know, egg cooking. And then after that, you can start doing, you know, whatever you want in there. Uh, as my car alarm goes off, somebody's probably stealing my car. Not really. Okay, so anyways, uh, what I've got here is I've got, uh, this was one, believe it or not, one Yukon Gold potato that was about like, you know, maybe half the size of my fist or whatever. So what I'm doing is, is I'm just trying to get out more of that moisture, more of that water. I've laid it out on a towel, and now basically I just want to kind of get out as much of that water out of there as I possibly can. Uh, in real time, obviously we're taking our time today because I'm doing this for a video, but in real time, it should go... If I can snap my fingers pretty quick. <laughs> so as you're doing this process, as you, you know, heat up your pan, cut your potatoes, right? Rinse your potatoes in the sink with a good, you know, colander or whatever pasta strainer. Then go back, put your oil in, let that come up to temperature. Uh, in terms of temperature, once again, try not to go above medium, especially when you're frying. There's no need to. You really don't have to get your oil that hot. Uh, so basically between medium and low is about right. But anyways, what I'm going to do now is basically just continue to pat these dry as much as I possibly can uh, and then kind of move them around a little bit. Again, the more water you can get out of these, the less splatter you're going to have, you know, as you're cooking along and all that good stuff. Uh, so very important. Just try to, you know, try to keep things as dry as you can. Ideally, it'd be nice if I did this maybe like a half an hour ahead of time, but hey, who has that kind of time when you're cooking and when you want like potatoes now? Potatoes now! Uh, but anyways, you get the idea. So basically, just kind of dry them and then re-try to, you know, try to get another part of the towel, try to get them as dry as you possibly can. You know, you get the idea. All that good stuff. Okay, so normally I would have two hands and I'd be able to do this with two hands, but because you know, we're doing this for a YouTube video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put my potatoes in here and then drop them from here into the pan. If you can drop them in directly, great, even better. But for just for the purposes of this video, because I don't want to burn my hand, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a ladle full at a time uh, until I get my potatoes in there. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. My oil should be up to temperature. It's been a couple minutes. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just low, right? Low as you drop them. No need to drop them from high, a high altitude. Basically, just put them in. And let them let them do their thing. Don't I wouldn't try to move the pan around right now. Just kind of just drop them in. You might get a little initial stickage, which is totally fine. So let me go ahead with another ladle full. Right there. And I could probably squeeze one more in. You never want to overcrowd your pan. You just want to fill it so that there's gaps like a mosaic tile, you know, kind of a vibe. So I've got a little bit more. Let's say right now in that pan, there's probably like maybe two fifths. I'm going to add another fifth or so of that potato. So I've got about another like two fifths of the potato left over that I'll do in another batch. Uh, but for the purposes of this video, so I'm going to drop these in. So that looks about, that looks about right. That's kind of where you want to be. You never want to overcrowd your pan because overcrowding could lead to stickage. But basically now that they've been moving, see how I see that the potatoes are kind of moving around like that one's a mover. What I'm going to do now is just give it like a little a little shake, right? A little shake and bake here action. Now that I know that they're not sticking, I'm good to go. Okay, so rather than bore you with another two to three minutes of watching this video, the tips from this point on are always keep your heat somewhere around like, you know, on the higher side of the medium, like medium to low, but it's kind of like on the higher side of medium. I kind of marked mine off because I've been doing this over and over and over again. Uh, but what I want to do is I just want to stir... Right, and just wiggle every so often and basically deep frying those potatoes. 
And as you can see here from ground level, or as close as I can get to ground level, the oil's kind of halfway up the potatoes. Right, so I've got, a, I've got about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit less than a quarter of an inch layer of, in this case today we used corn oil in there, frying up the potatoes. What I'll do is I'll go in with either a wooden, wooden type of implement, right? This one I think is some fancy schmancy, I don't know, I got this as a present, Crofton, there you go, there's the brand name. Some kind of wooden implement to move those potatoes around. Uh, or what I like to do is uh, OXO Good Grips makes a great set of silicone, uh, whatever these are called, pinchers, I don't even know, uh, tongs, silicone tongs, and just go in there and flip them all around and just get them kind of stirred so that they brown and coat evenly. This process does go pretty quick, so keep that in mind. By the way, for splatter control, Sergeant Splatter, what I like to use is the silicone protector thingamajiggies right i will put a link down below in the description i did a review on this way back when i believe this is beckonware right is the brand name uh also i think oxo good grips may or may not make a version of this which is you know even better basically a good high quality silicone uh protector so that's going to protect my pan anyways if you do like what you're seeing hit that like button hit the subscribe button down there below if you have any comments or questions, post them in the comment section. But basically, you get the idea and the process. These are actually ready to flip, so I'm going to go ahead and flip them. Uh, but I will catch you all in the next exciting video. But what this is doing, what this whole process is doing is, this is adding more layer of seasoning to the stainless steel pan to turn it into a wask, wop, sorry. <laughs> all the Italians out there are going to be offended. I'm going to tell you too. A wok-esque pan with wok-style seasoning on the bottom. That's basically what we're trying to do here. And as you do this, kind of swirl around the edges and the sides. And these are the secrets that the restaurants use to get their pans to become as non-stick as possible. Like if you ever walk into a restaurant kitchen, you know, not the ones on TV, because on TV everything is shiny and new and I don't know what tricks or tips I do know, but I'm not going to tell you what they use on their TV shows. But if you walk into a restaurant kitchen, what gives the food, the flavoring and the taste and that kind of great aroma like especially in the asian restaurants is this whole process deep frying cooking you know very minimal leaf especially for the first like 20 times of using their wok and basically just kind of building that seasoning layer so it's going to go from lighter brown to dark brown and the more and more you do this especially the first 20 times as you use your pan the more you're going to get that darker and eventually black coating in there that's going to be as non-stick as non-stick can be. Anyways, like button, subscribe button. Make sure to hit the no notification bell if you want to be notified when the videos come out. Check out the description section. I will put a link to this frying pan, some other great kitchen appliance stuff, and also the hood or the vent fan that I need to turn on now because it's getting a little smoky in here. Uh, but you get the idea. Oh, by the way, smoke factor. There isn't too much smoke. See, like as you can see, there's not a whole lot of smoke. It's just vapor, more of oil vapor that's permeating my, you know, my house right now, my little small apartment. Uh, but that's why I want to turn that van on. Anyways, catch you on the next exciting video.